I'm just gonna I'm just gonna add I I kind of understand where it all come uh, this um, uh, confusion or or um, uh, how can I say this where where uh, the the premise of a lot of the premises lie in uh, a lot of what people think you know typically they'll say well there will always be somebody who uh, will take a kitchen knife and use it to kill somebody and hostility and aggression is inside us and so there's always going to be some uh, way organizing you know calling somebody and say hey let's go you know teach those people a lesson and uh, there will always be some somebody made an example of strangling <laughs> strangles <laughs> the first the person that killed another person probably strangled them or something like that the the part that is perhaps what I'm introducing that uh, plays into this is actual is actually about physics physics and time physics and time is basically what um, governing all of existence our existence on this planet anyways is what makes it possible for a new definition or a definition of a, a new category um, called war human civilization war to appear possible not to appear but to be possible and basically we're talking about uh, that if um, people just strip away the inventions of weapons and and uh, armament and what have you and we have the the this this um, unavoidable human nature that so many talk about that we would still come up with you know uh, fighting and stuff apply it in the context of physics and time what does it mean it means that I will you know, it will take me time to walk across the street, rally up some friends like the monkeys do. You know, they all, you know, they, they take a certain amount of time and a certain amount of uh, physical um, ability to work with physical elements. You know, go look around for rocks and sticks, you know, to, uh, to start this battle across the river. And all this will take a certain amount of time given what phys what physicality or material is available in the in the um in the, in their world the difference is that war uses a thousand times more effectively time and material um availability so in a fraction of the time it takes the monkeys to organize themselves we already have a cannon that kills a thousand people in one shot. We have sciences that produce uh, fusion and are able to, you know, what we invent. Uh, we have armies that uh, exponentially, uh, with the number of soldiers, can um, uh, take over and kill or destroy or invade uh, that much more exponentially the, uh, ter the amount of territory in another country. War is in a whole other category. War is some, it's a completely different beast. And part of the reason we um, have never really been very sophisticated in differentiating this analogy, within this analogy of monkeys and how human beings war, is because we never applied the aspect of physics and what physics and time allow human beings to do with their intelligence. So that's the, that's the main critical uh, different, uh, John, in, in why I understand or why I'm trying to, I have come to understand, I'm trying to explain um, this differently. I don't know that uh, it, this is already, this exists, this understanding exists somewhere, probably, but the point is that if we understood all the way to the end precisely in what in the definition that war actually is and what makes it possible and we applied it as the ultimate or the best highest understanding uh, we can have of why war occurs it would uh, establish things um, at the smaller scale like that what makes war possible is the actual weapon the weapon stimulates the mind to organize itself and stimulates human nature to later create this war made possible by a different uh, 
uh, dimensional context of space and and time. I mean, uh, space, time, and uh, physicality. And so, by concluding, by this making it clear and conclusive that it is the instrument that makes war as we know it in civilization happen, we would really uh, start overturning a lot of uh, antiquated, established, in, embedded beliefs that are making people uh, and society and civilization behave according to other ways that we have concluded our nature is and the world is and therefore we must uh, prepare ourselves in case somebody attacks us and like somebody and this belief like you can only you uh, uh, the way to assure that there is peace is by being armed and all these kind of social beliefs that have been passed down and uh, affirmed because basically they all come from this assumption that war uh, occurs as a result of human nature but we're proving the opposite not the opposite but we're proving something different we're proving that the war, as we know it, uh, of humanity, uh, the wars that occur in humanity, occur because of the invention. Now, it's not a matter of saying yes or no, let's destroy all the guns. It's a matter of uh, establishing the correct reasoning in order to um, uh, result from that or, or re, re, you know, continue on the logic and uh, a way to uh, better the world, handle the world, administrate laws, uh, why we do things differently to how we have before. So if we already know, in other words, that it is the weapons that cause the war, then we would be more adamant about, we care more about not producing weapons, about really getting rid of nuclear weapons, about really trying to... Uh, not be uh, so trigger happy about our war and uh, our um, armament industries and so it in this capacity it would immediately start diminishing the violence diminishing the hostilities dim diminishing the confrontations diminishing the political per posturing of countries because they assumed that war is inevitable and so by changing that, it changes the world. It doesn't mean that we have to all of a sudden start looking for all the guns that there are and start getting rid of uh, uh, and, and, and presume that a utopic, perfect world where there will be no knives somehow will cut meat with laser beams and people uh, make fun of people that propose um, you know, an end to wars because they really can't understand that what is actually being said is that thinking about it differently gives rise to a different reasoning about our production our we of weapons, our production of, of guns, our production of armament. We would be thinking about it as the actual culprit of killing ourselves through wars, and so we would go about them differently than how we're going about them right now which is to think, well, you know, war is always going to be around, so we might as well be the strongest ones. A completely different world that doesn't mean that we're proposing a utopic um, fantasy. It means that we would think differently about our actions and our, and, and our governing of ourselves as we identify that this invention of mankind affects us very badly, and so we would be more, for one thing, we would be more mature and being more accountable for human nature and what it provokes us to do by having things. Things do provoke humanity to uh, behave and do things uh, opposite to what that guy wrote before. You know, we do become a certain way even, not just the things we do, but we even become... Uh, personality-wise, thanks. It's always in collaboration to something else. If a, if a, a parent um, raises a child without uh, values of, of self-worth and uh, dedication, responsibility, humbleness, and so forth, uh, and, and doesn't do that, uh, he may not grow up spoiled, but if he if the family is also rich and has lots of money, and on top of it, it raised a child that way, well, very likely it will grow up to be a spoiled child. So things in collaboration with 
um, with our human nature and our and our psychological conditions, it, it all kind of conspires. It all fuses to produce again a world that continues to be a mix of physicality and uh, non-physical or esoteric or whatever um, mind stuff. <laughs> I never found the right word for that. Okay, I'm sorry. Ten minutes. That's it. Last one. Bye.